nga ja gang gamia daru pa durga jiring ganj pa wanjo wanli in yun nga ja gang guli ngabu mara pa baba mara ngurejang so i'm jiri longbottom um i come from the southern part of daru country uh gomia is is our dialect or our clan group uh that's that's the southernmost clan group of Daru. Um, other countries I'm associated with also uh, Wandjawandian country. Uh, we spoke Dharamwa there, which is sort of a dialectual, uh, a dialectual language of both Daru and Durga. Uh, and then I go into Jiringanj country, which is from Mystery Bay in the south down to Bega. Um, and that's all known as, uh, as nowadays known as Yuan country, but you know, uh, in those languages, the word for man is Yuan, um, and those are both my grandmother and my grandfather's countries. I come from the coastal part of my country, so we were referred to as Gadungul, or people of Gadu. A lot of, a lot of my uncles and aunties have taught me about ties they had uh, in the La Perouse area, where, uh, you know, the Timbris specifically, who I have been connected with and, and know of, uh, the old fellas, uh, they had a big connection to the Illawarra area. Uh, they all descend from, you know, the Bulaya, Timbri, uh, old traditional fella Timbri. So, you know, I understand that the Timbris then, uh, you know, went and uh, settled in the La Perouse area. And um, I know that, they, that that family used to, you know, walk from La Perouse to Saltpan Creek, and, uh, which is Bijuku country. Uh, Saltpan Creek where they'd make their tools and you know their, their weapons and things like that and bundies and you know their, spear, their spears and things like that and um, uh, yeah so I understand that they'd make that track from La Perouse so they had that connection with that country uh, yeah also you know you find people like Young Bundle in the frontier wars uh, Young uh, Bundle was fighting alongside Pemawe's son, Pemawe was a Bijigu man. Uh, Bijigu country, I understand, is the Cooks River, Saltpan Creek, and Georgia's River area, and all within. Um, yeah, so he became acquainted with Pemawe's son, and that was, I understand, their, their, their law connection and things like that. Um, within that, you have the area like, like Cogra. Um, you know, Cogra's got a real strong history with um, the, the Botany Bay area uh, or has a strong Aboriginal connection as all, all country does. Um, now I know that uh, there was an Aboriginal camp there, you know, Ellesmere Aboriginal camp in, the, in 1883 was established and, um, you know, people like the Timbers were still going to, to Salt Pan Creek to, to, to make the, the implements they were uh, selling that to the Europeans when they came here and um, so this place here, uh, Janali, uh, is named, so this is the place of the moon. So in, in northern Darawu, the moon is Yanara, and uh, Janali being place of the moon. So down home in southern Darawu, we call the moon Jajong. So you wouldn't sort of have that same interpretation up here. So when I was talking about also differences in, uh, you know, cultural links and, and they're all being broken up into different sections uh, according to law purposes and things like that, uh, they noted what, when the Europeans came to the Sydney area, uh, they became acquainted with a, a young fellow called, or the Europeans called him Colby, his name was Gulliby, and uh, upon you know people like Dawes and them European fellas, the early European fellas Dawes and them uh, you know, going on a bit of an expedition to the western part of Sydney. Um, Gulby and them weren't really, uh, they weren't familiar with the area and were quite surprised when they came across the Nepean River. They, they were, they were quite, quite scared of the natives of Parramatta, you know, so they weren't really acquainted with that area as you know they didn't speak the same language, they spoke a different dialect and could barely understand them and uh, didn't know of the area at all. So, um, you know, that shows that Parramatta had links to other areas, the, the Barramatagul, as they were called, you know, the Barra, the eel people. Our mob, 
uh, were the first to see the, 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 you know, the ships come up the coast. We call that Gurungaba, the big pelican. Uh, that's how they visualised the ship being a, a big greedy pelican coming up the coast to swallow up all the people. And um, so we lit fires. Each mob down home lit fires up the coast to alert the, the northerners um, that they were coming. So we had Gadungul, and then you had the mountain mob, and then you had the Snowy's mob in the high country who, who, who we, you know, we'd sort of trade for stone axes with, for sea pearls and things like that. We had the jewellery, you know, we used to use abalone shell or, or pearls from oysters and things like that to make jewellery and we'd trade that with the inland tribes for their stone axes which we don't have on the coast because we've got sandstone you see um, and then the fellas had that, that basaltic rock uh, which was much stronger to make axes with and things like that so you had them three sections of what they refer to as Yuan nowadays and then you had also uh, Guyangu and Guruyel which is north and south, so Guyangu, Guya being south, Guyangu, the people of the south, uh, and then Guruyel, the people of the north, so we had the southerners and the northerners. Yeah, and so as, as the ships were coming up the coast, we were lighting fires to alert, you know, people going further north, that this big pelican's coming to swallow us all up. <laughs>